Welcome back to another episode of The Canon. Today we will be reviewing Suicide Squad. <laughs> All right, Sal, so let's start this off with your theater experience. Uh, we both saw this Thursday night as I am now coining as Nerd Night. It could be Nerd Night. It is uh, now Nerd Night. My experience at theater was, uh, it was good, normal. Didn't have a signed seating again this time as, as it, it did in Apocalypse. Uh, so the, the nerves are always there that you're not gonna get yes. a good seat. But the theater was huge that we went to, so didn't have a problem with that. There were a lot of kids there though. They were about, they looked like they were 12, 13 year old by mm. themselves, groups of kids. So a uh, lot more kids than I've ever seen at, at this year's anyways, uh, superhero movies. Uh, but it was good. I went with a bunch of friends and we all got to experience it uh, at the same time. So theater experience was nice. And yes, that was that. Was it packed? Uh, what's the numbers like? It was such a big theater, so I can't gauge uh -huh. depending on regular theaters. But yeah, it was pretty crowded. But it wasn't like stuffed into... It was kind of like a, a weird theater out of nowhere. So maybe that had Not something to do with it. One. Seven o'clock, yeah, yeah, maybe. Got you. Mine, um, it was weird uh, because the, it wasn't in like the the, 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 the the sorry the deluxe theater. Yeah, it wasn't in the big room as they say. Um, it was in like the average size room, so that was weird for me. But who knows? It was like three showings and there's two theaters next to each other. But who knows? Point being, it was packed. There was not a seat in the house. Okay. Um, we're talking about as the preview started rolling. The, you know, the 18 year old, you know, whoever managers on charge at the theater came in. Oh, oh guys, you gotta move over. To, <laughs> is that seat taken? Come, come sit down. There's couples split, being split up. There's children sitting away from their mom. Oh, it was a real movie experience. <laughs> it was, it was tragic chaos going on before the movie even started. <laughs> mom, what are you doing up there? <laughs> but anyway, so yes, it was, and I was shocked. We got there about 30 minutes early um the theater was already open it was about 70 percent full um but me and my brother we went we sat in the front row and i'm just like okay you know we're good but man as it started it just kept people kept coming and coming yeah. and it's like you said a lot a lot of nerdy looking teenagers yeah <laughs> it was just like PG-13, and this is why you go PG-13, everybody's like, well, why don't you do Rated R? It's because all those numbers of kids that are by themselves, that yeah. are able to get up there by themselves and go with their friends, you lose those numbers if you go Rated R. So, um, yeah, not a seat in the house. Absolutely good. crazy. Sounds like a good experience. Yeah, so, overall impression, um, and just real quick, would you tell people to go see it? Definitely go see it. Um, you can't not go see this movie. You've been waiting too long for this movie to not go see it. So go see it. It's good, but it's not great, in my opinion. All right. Uh, my impression, I had a lot of fun with this movie. 1,000% recommend you go see it. I think um, casual fan, hardcore fan, I think any fan will enjoy this. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a summer movie. Uh, so, like we usually do for the one episode ago, uh, let's go into the negatives first. Um, anything that, actually no, sorry, well, reverse, okay. messed up, messed up. We're going characters first, this is an ensemble piece. Okay. So let's start off, give me your top three characters in order. Oh, my top three characters in order. I gotta go with Diablo, number one. Okay. Diablo number one. Not shocked. Why, because I'm Mexican? <laughs> <laughs> no, Diablo number one. Uh, so in order, I wasn't expecting order, but I know. Um, I'm gonna have to go Harley number two, and it's a very close, close third between Rick Flag and Amanda Waller for me. So I'm gonna go Rick Flag because he surprised me so much that I'm gonna have to chalk it up to number three for him. All right, number one for me is Deadshot, number two, Diablo, and number three is Amanda Waller, Okay. in order. Um, so we're gonna do a quick breakdown of each character. Um, so let's start off with uh, Daddy's Little Monster herself, Harley Quinn. All right, 
Harley Quinn, um, played by Margot Robbie. Um, first time on big screen, everything like that. Just what are your impressions, good, bad, or otherwise? She surprised me. Um, not like as as the previews progressed and time got closer to this whole movie coming out. I I kind of my excitement for her kind of dwindled just because I just thought. Maybe I'm not going to like her. Maybe I'm, what I'm seeing is what I'm going to get. But she surprised me. Um, she brought me back up to believing in, in Harley Quinn again. So I really liked her. I enjoyed her. I thought she was a uh, pretty central character to the story. I like what they gave her to work with. And, you know, she comedic relief as always. Um, and I liked how much she bonded with everyone on the team. That was pretty cool, even... You know, whoever it was, she had something good to say about them, or she gave him a pat on the back at any time, whatever it was. Um, and I think Margot did a great job uh, portraying her, so I didn't really have a problem with her. And she kind of had that accent that we all thought she wasn't going to have at all. She kind of, it kind of made its way in there. So I, I think they did that on purpose, or she did it on purpose, not to over, overdo it with the uh, the whole pudding accent. Mm-hmm. Um. <coughs> I went into the movie, as you know, not excited for her at all, uh, and I came out very mixed on her. Mm -hmm. uh, she was very hit or miss for me, did not make my top three. Um, there were parts I really liked, and then there was parts that I really didn't like. Um, and sticking what you said with the accent, it was all over the place. Yeah. I don't understand like how that came in the final cut. Like At one moment, she knew 52 regular voice, one moment she's Batman animated series. Hey, Dr. J. Mm -hmm. One moment she's just straight New York. What are you doing over there? I was just like, okay, who are you? And True. like me and my brother were saying, they're probably chalk it up. Oh, she's a psycho. She has a different voice. Mm -hmm. That don't fly. You need to pick one track and stay with it. I don't like how she bounced back and forth. Um, yeah, so. I could chalk it up though as she has, she's already established in this world and she's kind of taking a new path taking a new path and maybe when she was first harley quinn and i don't know but i would believe that if the only time she talked like that was in flashbacks but that wasn't the case yeah it was sometimes in the present all right so moving on next up we got dead shot um floyd lawton uh will smith whatever you want to call yeah. it we know you went in worried about this yeah. character how'd you come out uh fine like i i, I liked him he didn't do anything to balance me back or forth either way uh, but I did appreciate that he kind of had an edge to him a little bit more than I thought he would I kind of thought he'd take the Rick Flag um, role in terms of I'm leading this thing now and and he did in some sense but um, like just the way his character spoke and his kind of mentality a lot of the times was kind of just like this badass guy who kind of doesn't care um, so I, I appreciate that, um, and just him, you know, he's Will Smith, he did a good job. I like him. Will Smith is back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about trash movie, After Earth, whatever he did, and it, it just has been so long before, since we've seen a good Will Smith movie. I mean, um, I, Concussion was probably good, I didn't see it, I heard good things, but we just haven't had the Will Smith we've missed, and this was a role Taylor made for him. Mm -hmm. Something I was trying to tell you, something I've told other people, that it's not Superman, it's not Joker, it's not a distinct character. It's an assassin who wants to get back to his daughter. Anybody could play that role. So putting Will Smith in that, anything dealing with the daddy dynamic, he's good at that stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course the action. Oh my, like number one for me on my list for a reason, shining star of this movie. Um, Dude, he like had 80% of the jokes. Like everything yeah. went through Will Smith, but it wasn't like he dominated the movie and took over. Because if you know Deadshot as a character, that kind of is how he uh, ends up being with the Suicide Squad. He ends up kind of being the leader, like you said. Mm -hmm. Even though Rick Flagg is the leader, I like the way this was in the first movie where it's not like a complete 180 in the first movie like most of the movie he's struggling hey i'm not a good guy i don't save people mm -hmm. you know this that and the other and so i think there's a progression that'll set up future stuff with will smith love that shot love the action too because the comedy's funny but then you put the action on top of it he's the best in action mm -hmm. as uh, most people probably would agree yeah 
All right, so uh, moving on, uh, the Dark Horse, El Diablo. Yeah, yeah. Your number one. Yeah, he was my number one just because I felt like he had the most character development throughout the movie, which I'll get to later. But um, I thought his acting, Jay Hernandez's acting, was spot on. I thought he was the best actor in that movie. Um, and like I said, his character had the most depth out of any of them. Um, and yeah, I just, and I liked it. And you know, I liked how he was struggling in the beginning. And, and it's kind of like a formulaic character. There's nothing different that they did with his character. Like he had this dark past and then he's kind of in the background and then he comes to redeem himself at the end. That's nothing new, but um, I just like how he portrayed it. And you know, I like Jay Hernandez um, in this role. Yep, my number two. I didn't see it coming. I thought it was a very smart, interesting twist to put on that where he uh is just like a um pacifist. He's just like I'm not a fighter. Like that scene with him in the tank when Amanda Waller was first trying to get him was just so it was just so good. Mm -hmm. He was just like I'm gonna die in peace before I lift my fist again. Yeah. And I was just like, What? <laughs> nice. And <laughs> even though it was good, like she slams the tablet up yeah. against the that's not you <laughs> <laughs> so um but yeah love diablo didn't have any issues with him mm -hmm. um so let's move on killer croc mm -hmm. um what'd you think of him not enough screen time at all um i killer croc i thought could have also been the el diablo type in terms of dark past dark character but then comes to light they didn't really do anything with him, but in terms of just at him as a character, I like that he wasn't totally this grunt. I, I, like I said it in our expectations, I hope he's not just like a grunt guy. And, and he wasn't, and he had some funny quips at the end, and um, he kind of opened up a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, I thought he was good. He looked really small though. I don't know if that's, uh, I, forgot, I don't even know how to say his name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Aku, yeah. Anyways, um, the guy from Lost, that's how I know him. He's probably the tallest one out of the cast. He's tall, but he like his arms looked really small in the suit. I don't know what they did, but he, I thought he was going to be kind of more, a little bit more jacked. But anyways, um, for what I saw of him, I liked him. I like that, again, like he wasn't this brainless Killer Croc guy that sometimes we see in the comics. Yeah. Uh, I like Killer Croc. I mean, we know which people are supporting and which yeah. one were the main stars, so... I wasn't looking for him to get a lot. I just wanted him to fit well, and I think he did. Um, but characters like that, you could tell by the way they did his voice and stuff. They're not meant to have a lot of dialogue moments. So the small moments they have speak a lot. And the moment that got me, like early on in the movie, is just like uh, when Rick Flagg is just there and there, and he's just like, "Why did he put you down here?" And he was like, "Cause I asked for it." Mm -hmm. And I was just like, "That's all I know. I'm good. I'm good." And so I, I really like Killer Croc. Surprised he didn't die. We could talk about that later, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, he survived and uh, he played his role. Captain Boomerang. Uh, I don't know. Do we want to talk about the scene that started off with him? But which one? Oh, you you remember? When did they introduce Boomerang? Who showed up? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think of Captain Boomerang? A guy played I said by F Terry. The first time I saw that. The guy played by Jack Courtney who. People just had no expectations yeah. for. Um, I, again, mm, I mean, he was kind of like in the middle between leader, leading star, not leading star, but very out front star and kind of background star. So he kind of played that second tier. Second tier, which I don't know how I felt about, just because I was like, like you were saying, choose one. I don't know which one he was. Um, but again, uh, I thought he was okay. Nothing special, nothing bad, just kind of there for me at least. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. This whole movie just made kind of like. You. I'm well, sorry, I have to say it. This whole movie just kind of just. Okay, don't go there. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. Okay, so my Jai Courtney opinion. Loved him. Absolutely love him again. Not, you're right. He wasn't a supporting character per se, but yeah. he, we knew his role wasn't going to be as big. I think it could have been bigger, but I really love what we got. Like, it's hard to say he was comedic relief because there was so much comedy yeah. in this. But those moments, kind of like when we saw that trailer for the first time, it's 
like all the action is just stops and he's like drinking. Yeah. It's like that's exactly what he gave you in the movie. Those moments, like dude, the stuff, the pink unicorn. Oh yeah, he's like pink. Like I don't even care. It's a pink unicorn. Like none of that matters. It's the way he did it. Cause every time he picks up, yeah, <laughs> and I was just laughing so hard. And then the, I'm sorry, he gave the moment of the movie. The moment of the movie, he was like, Rick Flags, like, you guys are free to go. <laughs> like, yeah, he just left. He just got on. <laughs> like, the theater could not stop laughing. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I was dead. Um, so I loved it. There could have been more. Um, the thing with me is his action wasn't as strong. Yeah. Because with Captain Boomerang, you have to immediately establish he's lethal because otherwise it seems stupid. Um, I liked how they showed some of his different boomerangs. One that exploded, one was like a drone. But I think they just need a little more, you know, of his weaponry. But I, I really like Jack Courtney and what he brought. Yeah, I can see him definitely being a big part in this universe. Um, man, so many. <laughs> Real quick, Slipknot. Oh. Um, <laughs> the character <yeah>. that <laughs> strove and persevered through it all. Yeah. I can't <laughs> believe they didn't give him his own infographic like they did everyone else. Oh. I can't believe it, but like well, you also know why like, now. Well, yeah, we know why. This so. is a spoiler view. He's dead. He's yeah, dead. He died. Do we have anything? He else died to about say? ten minutes. And not even the way. Not even he's dead. The way he died was so. He's just goofy yeah. on his part. I think it was funny in the movie, but on his part, come on, really? Yeah. You don't listen to Captain Boomerang. Did they even introduce him as Slipknot? No, they didn't. They didn't even say this. He is pulls Slipknot. up in the uh, in car. The car. They, yeah, they say it was like Slipknot, the guy that can climb anything. And right there, oh, I was I like, he's dead, because that's the dumbest. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> like, but the fact that he punched that woman was hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh okay, he's dead. Um, Rick Flag. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Rick Flag number three for me really surprised me. Um, what's his name? What's the actor's name? Oh, I'm blanking. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know. I why. keep thinking Jack Courtney. It's not Jack Courtney. No. Anyways, Some uh, Ki Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman. Sorry. Joel. There. Uh, he surprised me a lot. I didn't think. I thought Rick Flag was gonna fall into the background and someone else like uh, Deadshot was gonna take over, but he his character was strong for me. I thought. Um, his motivations were good uh, with June Moon and um, you know their their relationship. And um, again, uh, he struggled throughout the movie um, because he was supposed to be the leader, and he was for most of the part. But he also struggled at the midpoint or right before the the third act, where they're in the bar, and he comes in. He's like, "Yeah, I, I screwed up. You know, I need you guys. I need you guys." And so I think that's why I kind of uh, it resonated with me. His character did um, more so than a lot of the other ones, and um, just the way he portrayed his his character, and, and he made something of a soldier. I mean, we've seen soldiers thousands and thousands of times, but um, you know, he kind of made it a little bit um, more realistic uh, for this comic book movie. I really like Joe Kinnaman. Um, I love him, RoboCop. Okay, no one say love RoboCop movie, love him in it, but. Yes, uh, we know he wasn't a huge part, but now I'm sitting there thinking, you know, you needed a straight man. You needed a, for lack of a better word, Captain America guy that's just like all about the mm -hmm. rules and the right thing. Because I think the strength of his character is having Amanda Waller and Deadshot to play off. Because the scenes when he's going up against them to juxtapose is when he looks the best. Mm -hmm. Because then you see the, the differences. But yeah, I think he held together strong. And yeah, I mean, it was a very beating level effort. I don't think it was outstanding, but I don't think it was horrible at all. So mm -hmm. really enjoyed Rick Flagg. Um, yeah. Thank Speaking you. of, Amanda Waller. Amanda Waller, Viola Davis, told you from the beginning that I was going to enjoy her. Uh, but I don't know if you did. Uh, but, oh yeah, obviously you did. She was your top, one of your top. Um, yeah, she she came off strong. I wish she would have been just a little bit more manipulative and uh, kind of just a little bit more meaner. I, I wish she was a little bit more meaner. You didn't think she was mean enough? I think she, I thought she was pretty mean. She gunned down like five people. I know, I know. <laughs> But um, I, you know, I just think her scenes could have been just a little bit stronger in terms of dialogue between people when she wanted her way. But either way, I thought she delivered. I thought um, you know Viola Davis did did uh, Amanda Waller justice the whole way through. And yeah, that was pretty 
pretty dark when she shot those people in, in the uh, uh, the uh, the room, whatever you want, the situation room. Yeah. Um, I met. <laughs> Yeah, I came into it not knowing what I was going to get from Viola Davis, just from what they showed us. But I was open, and I'm happy it was a lot better than I thought. I think she cements herself as Amanda Waller. Um, I give her a little bit of a pass because this you really see this as kind of an origin story, more or less. Mm -hmm. Because we know they've been around for the 20 years that Batman's been around, but this is an origin story of... Task Force X, Argus, and Suicide Squad. So Amanda Waller, as you saw, they just approved it. So like mm -hmm. this is her first time really being in charge. So I think as you progress, hopefully, you'll never catch her with her pants down ever again. Like even in this movie, most times she had a, a trump card, mm -hmm. but sometimes she didn't. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is her first outing. Now as we go forward, She's kind of like Batman. She's never going to have, you know, slip up again. Yeah, she's never going to have somebody that has the upper hand on her. So I really loved it. Yes, yeah, she went dark like a bunch of times, and it was just like, wow, okay. Um, yeah, she's Amanda Waller. But my, my, the moment, and it's like everybody has a moment where they sold me. It's like when they find out it's her in the uh, building, yeah, and they're all like ganging up on her, and then she's just like. You know, talks down to him. Then she walks past and shoulder bumps Killer Croc. <laughs> Out of all the people, yeah. she bumps Killer Croc. Get out of my way. And I was just, yep, that's that. That's Amanda Waller right there. Yeah. So absolutely loved her portrayal. And I'll jump ahead. Who cares? The end credit scene. Which, should stop working nights. Like, I think that set up the dynamic for future uh, conversations with her and Batman, Bruce Wayne. Like. That dynamic was so good. I was not expecting mm -hmm. to see like the A-level cast members interact with this Suicide Squad cast. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, last but not least, I think we gotta talk about it. The Joker. What about Enchantress too? Oh crap, There's so many of these yeah, people. Yeah, right. Enchantress, go ahead. Who turned out to be the main villain. Oh, here we go. And not Tattoo Man, he was in it. I don't even think oh, he was Tattoo my. Man. I don't know what the... I'm not, I'll get to that later. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. anyways, Enchantress, June Moon. Um, I liked her. I liked her a lot. I I have more problems with her character in terms of the story, but uh, the portrayal uh, was great. I loved the voice changes. I loved just the movements and everything like that. She looks scary. She, you know, the witch was manipulative. Um, so it, it may, and, and that scene with when she falls asleep and she says Enchantress in her sleep, mm -hmm. thought that was amazing. I thought it was scary. Um, so, you know, I, I liked it a lot. Wish she would have had more, I might keep saying depth, but I wish that, that character would have had a little bit more depth, would have been a little, would have really been a villain. Talk about villain problems with Marvel, but this, this had a villain problem. Yeah, um, like June Moon, didn't like Enchantress. Really? Uh, Enchantress, I like the look. I like kind of where they were going, but once she became the main villain, it went downhill. Did not like that stuff. Uh, and it started out so strong. You talked the hand switch, mm -hmm. which I had that scene spoiled for me. I have no idea who it was or where they got it from. But it was on YouTube somewhere and I saw it yeah. before the movie that pissed me off. But that scene was so cool. Like you said, the scene when she was in bed. Like when it seemed like she was kind of going to be a pawn uh, in the Suicide Squad, that seemed more interesting. Once it turned to, oh, she's a villain, that's when I, that's when problems start happening. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, June Moon I like. And I think they set it up where she can still come back. Not fully as Enchantress, but have residue of the power left over. Yeah. And you could do it that way. Because even though I think Kara Kara, I don't know how to say her name. Divine. But even though I think she looks like a dude, I don't care what anyone says, she looks like a dude. She does have a presence about her. And she's not a great actor, actress. But she has a presence about her. Something about her, every time I see her, I, I want to watch. Mm -hmm. And so seeing her on screen, she had a presence about her. So I really hope they uh, kind of bring her back and do a little more with her. Um, okay. 
Joker. Joker. Go ahead. Ooh. The clown prince, the king juggalo, whatever you want to call him. Yeah, I liked him a lot. I, I We got a lot of him from the previews already, and then they cut down the time in, within the movie. So we kind of saw a lot of what he was already bringing to the table. But the extra stuff that we got, I liked him. Um, I, you know, just his portrayal, uh, Jared Leto's portrayal of him, I thought was strong. I thought it was different. We already knew it was going to be different. Um, yeah, and, and I liked... Because they were going for, I think it was David Ayer that was talking about about it, saying how they wanted this gangster guy for the Joker. Mm -hmm. So I think he really delivered on that, and I like I like the switch in, in the Joker portrayal. So um, Leto's Joker, and we saw him without makeup in the dream sequence or the, the vision sequence. So that was interesting. Uh, but yeah, and then when he comes around with the, the helicopter, you're like, oh, that's them. And he just starts shooting up the place. So, like, just that shows me that I cared about that character. And, um, you know, I liked him. So, yeah, I liked him. All right. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to transition to negatives right uh -oh. here. Uh, I hate this Joker. Mm. I hate everything about this Joker. I can't stand this Joker. I've thought about it for less than 24 hours obviously, but I thought about it and it's it's everything. It's not, at first I thought it was Jared Leto's performance. I actually didn't think it was what they did with the Joker. I thought it was Leto's performance, it just wasn't good. Like the delivery of it wasn't that good. Then I thought about it, no, it's everything. I don't like the character, I don't like the fact that he's a crime, Lord. Boss, whatever he is, I don't like the fa I don't like the relationship with him and Harley. Let me talk about that later. I don't like the look. I don't like anything about this Joker. It 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 piss it it pisses me off a little bit. Um, the only thing is Heath Ledger and all that. We can't go back there. It, it's done. He, yeah. he he's he's passed on. So I I can't get mad at that. But it's just like he took a stab at it you try I can't get with it I can't stand like all of it it's just not cool like I don't even the scene when he like is laying there with all the knives I thought that was gonna be mean something that was gonna be cool wasn't and oh I'm sorry I liked it a lot and and the one scene that sticks out in my mind is the one where they're in the kitchen of the club or the strip club or, or the casino or whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, with the guard. And all the guards and all the henchmen guys, they're like taking everything really seriously and then he comes walking in they're like, just like looking. And that can happen with any villain or any bad boss or anything, but that just kind of, it just hit me in a way, it made me feel a certain way where I was like, oh, this guy's bad. See, and I like that. That scene is one of the worst. Actually, most of the worst scenes I have are with Joker. Like, it was, it had all the build up and the tension and the look of a scene that was gonna be good. Like, all it took Joker, because I was freaking out. Because this is before I, you know, fell off the Joker, because this is early in the movie. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, dude, you don't understand. The Joker's coming. Yeah. And so he comes, and I'm like, man. I'm like ready for some messed up stuff. And he does nothing. And like the fact he had him kiss his ring, like all I was just like, what <laughs> is this? This is like- I could see him doing that. Joker is not out there for the power and the crime and the rule stuff. He's just chaotic. You know, he's there to have fun with it. And then I'm like, okay, it's already out of character. And then after that, he just sits on his lap. I can tell you mean that. I was just like, was he gay now? I was like, what is going on? I was like, I don't understand what's going on. And I'm thinking like, he's go like, he and I know they cut out a lot of parts. He didn't say the part where I'm going to show you my new toys or anything. Yeah. But even still, as you watch the rest of the movie, he did nothing to that guard. He literally did nothing to him. Yeah, and I'm true. thinking like, Actually, I didn't think that. that is the part that really let me down with the Joker is that every time he had a chance All to part, no show bite. you, yes, every time he had a chance to show you, he did nothing. The only time he did something, he shot Moss T in the head, and it wasn't like even dramatic or anything. Yeah. It was like, okay, we knew that was coming. So I'm sorry. My biggest negative is the Joker out of this. I the only thing I will say is that it's early on in the Joker's tenure 
as far as the movies go. Uh, we haven't seen him interact with Batman. Uh, we didn't really see a lot of action. The parts that I did like is like you said when he's shooting off the helicopter and mm -hmm. stuff. Like when we're seeing him do stuff, that's when it felt like okay, I could get a little scared. But other than that, he gave me no reason to be scared of him. Yeah. So I'll hold out hope, but it's just I think every time I see that him as a crime boss is going to really throw me out of it. Yeah, and to be honest, now I think about it, um, I think if they would have totally not had the Joker in the movie at all, it would have made better. Or, if they would have left him in flashbacks, like I said from the very beginning, yeah. it cut, that would have built up the tension so much. Like, even if you had him doing no action, because first of all, one of the complaints that people are going to say, I don't know if it's one for you, is that we need to see more... Harlan Quinzel and Joker before they turn. Mm -hmm. And then that I think you have more time back then and less time in the, in the present. And so we're building up and building up. And then by the time we finally see Joker in the present, after seeing his backstory and how crazy he is, then you'll be scared. But yeah. Yeah, so I guess I could try and talk about the negative. This yeah. is just kind of an overall negative I have with the movie. And it stemmed from. David Ayer having to write this script in six weeks. Yeah. This movie was rushed. The story was rushed. There was no character development, barely, for any any of them. And it just, you know, it was nothing special about this movie to me in terms of story. Like, it was a linear story where they gather these guys and then they go to stop this other bad guy. And that's it. There was nothing in there, thrown in there, that made any sort of complications for them. They didn't really have any inner inner um, interactions where they, you know, fought each other verbally or physically. Not really, anyways. Nothing that would have made you think, oh, this isn't going to work out. So, I just think as a whole, this story was, this should have been a year from now. I think this should have came out a year from now. And I think this would have been a totally better movie. I thought it Why? would. Because oh, it would more have had time to write. More time okay. to write. They would have had a whole year to write, and then this year till next year to um, do it. Uh, yeah. So that's just my. I just think it was totally rushed. I just. Well, the only part, the only, I won't disagree. It was a bad story. The only thing I will counter to say is that it didn't need to be a great story. I've been talking to a couple people that have been talking about story. Most of the critics point at the story. But I'm like, it's a suicide squad. I said this, I feel like I've been saying this a hundred times before the movie came out. They, you get the bad guys to do something that you don't want to do. You threaten them to do it or you kill them. They do it. Like, it's not, you don't need a complicated story, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Especially with a summer movie. These are villains. Like, it's just about the journey. It's about having fun the ride okay. along. Yeah, I agree with that. But I don't think they had a journey at all. I think they, it was such a linear movie. Well, you don't think they had a journey as a team because I think a lot of the journey was in them being in jail and their backstory because that makes about half the movie introducing their backstory, how they got put in jail, then showing their time in jail. Yeah, but then it got lost because there was no development within their characters. So if they would have, that would have been fine. I've been fine with seeing they're here, they're in jail, and now they're working for the government, whatever, they do that. But there's nothing in that, in between there, where they're growing as characters. Not that I saw anyways, I saw, like I said, Diablo, and that's it. I mean, Harley Quinn stayed the same the whole time. She wanted well, to get you back expect to that. You, yeah. you wouldn't want her to change. But she's also a main character, so I think that she should have had some sort of development, whether it be more evil from before, or whatever it is, Deadshot. No development there. I mean, I guess he kind of proved that he can do something other than just kill people for his daughter, but even so, it, he didn't do much. And then the other characters, they didn't have enough screen time to to have any development. So I really, my problem was with the character development in this and Jesus Christ, the villain was horrible. Enchantress. Yeah. So you jump into my negative. Yeah. yeah the uh, Enchantress and her brother. What the hell was that? I don't know. Like, I don't know the history with Enchantress and stuff. I don't know her comic book history too much. Mm -hmm. So the brother could have played huge parts in comic books. I don't know. Um, but what the hell, man? Like, seriously, they 
threw him in there. It's like they said, oh, let's have his brother be, let's have her brother be in this movie just because we can make him look cool. He did absolutely nothing. She could have made, they used him, her basic, they used him mainly for muscle. Right. That was her muscle. She could have easily just taken these goo guys, made them into one big goo guy, and that would have been the muscle, and it would have got the exact same thing done without having to add this extra character that, one, should have, if they were going to have it at all, they should have had it, I would have had a little bit better um, acceptance if it would have been a, a higher named actor. I don't know that guy. I would have rather known the care the actor, even if he didn't say anything, I would have rather known the actor and have him be a bad guy, but... Man, they didn't. They really dropped the ball on that. And maybe that's not the most important part, but I can't go back on saying how much I hate Marvel for their sucky villains. Right. They DC did the exact same thing. I agree. I mean, that's probably my biggest negative, and uh, it is a issue because while we'll get to it, I really like this movie. I think what holds it back from being where that, the next level, whatever you your level is at with this movie, I think it could have been at the next level if the whole ending was done better. And most of it is because the villain is Enchantress and the way they poorly handled everything about her um, outside of the looks and everything. And oh, God. So, yeah, the brother thing, yeah, all that. Didn't need that at all. I mean, the only real reason he served is to get her away from Amanda Waller because with him... She couldn't use the heart to make her do whatever yeah. she was going to do. Um, but, yeah, I agree. The villain was terrible. The worst villain I've seen in a superhero movie. Second worst. I was thinking about this. I was like, man, no, this this is really, really bad. Only one that's worse? Zemo from Civil War. Okay, <laughs> what anyone says, stupid plan. But this was just as dumb. And so, the, I mean, I'll package this all together. The villain and the scene are one big negative for me. Okay. Go. What do you want? Uh, I just... I think it was the exact opposite. I really enjoyed the ending scene. Oh yeah, and I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the first three quarters. Yeah, so we're off somewhere. We'll, we'll get back to yeah. that. But I, the reason I like the ending scene is just it. Like we talked with the villain, we had no idea what she was trying to do. Yeah, and she's at so, all. She there's a big light in the sky. What are you trying to do? It was very reminiscent of X Men Apocalypse. Oh. What? Ghostbusters 1 is the exact same storyline. Where did you again. see Ghostbusters? What do you mean? No, Ghostbusters oh, the first uh, one. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and storyline. It was reminiscent to me of X-Men Apocalypse, where even I knew what Apocalypse was doing, it was just kind of like a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. And then we're just like, what the hell is going on? And so it was no, it was, with Apocalypse though, there's a clear cut goal with her i didn't even know what the goal was yeah i was like oh, let so, me take over the let me make a machine she, she kept saying machine machine and machine. it wasn't a machine and it wasn't it was a, a machine cloud it was a cloud with with lightning and she said you're gonna take over the world with it so with apocalypse it was like we knew what you wanted to do we weren't exactly sure how you were doing it with this we didn't know what you were doing and we didn't know how you were going to get it done yeah. she kept saying like she wanted to destroy the world's armies and then take over like how i don't even understand that yeah. so all of that is what really made the ending like the stakes weren't exactly there because you know you didn't feel the pressure because you didn't know what she was trying to do yeah on top of that the the way they finally ended it because i for one kind of like the action i like the fact that she kind of turned back to dark enchantress and like oh, was able to hold her own against every yeah. suicide squad she did it through instead of like well, she did fight them. But yeah. I was going to say she used she her spells and pulled stuff out, too. Well, yeah. And she pulled out some swords out of nowhere and started fighting I think because she got sliced by Katana. Somehow she then had swords. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't remember that. But she, I like that she was able to fight them. And then um, the ending, though. Like, the very ending, how they stop her was so stupid. Yeah. It was so anti-climatic. It was just all, it was just dumb. It's like Harley Quinn's like, oh, I think we should join. And I'm like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And so it's, and it wasn't like I needed something amazing. It was just like, you could have done it without picking the worst possible choice ever. Mm -hmm. And I could have forgave you, but there's nothing forgivable about that. And so the end of the scene, the villain, all that was just so bad like it would have been much better to start it off with 
I don't know, a bomb that's gonna blow up the world. Some some formulaic fine, but you could have gotten, gotten that. You gotten really off the grid with what villain you had and what their plan was with Suicide Squad. Like in the comics, there's a zombie takeover and they have to get the uh, oh. the cure <laughs> from the from that. the Superdome uh, in in uh, New Orleans. I'm not saying you have to do that, but that would have been entertaining. It would have been different for a different movie. And this was the same exact thing we get from every single, almost every single superhero movie. I mean, for me, I think you start small scale and work your way up. That would have been better for me. Not like super small scale, but you know, something to handle. Because it's tricky. A lot of this movie is tricky because the one thing I will say about picking Enchantress is that you get to that point where uh, they could have left, and my brother had a big issue with us. Like, why didn't any of them leave? Why did they keep fighting? I'm like, well, you gotta think about it. The world's gonna end, mm -hmm. supposedly. And so, as far as they know, and as magical as the world's gonna end, so what are you gonna do? Go steal a car, go rob a bank, the world's about to end. Yeah. So, yeah, like Harley Quinn said, you, you got anything else better to do. So that's the only positive because it makes them have a reason to stay and, you know, fight. Yeah. But I, I could have been executed better. Some. It was just... Ugh. Any other negatives? Um, I just think the whole story just moved way too fast. Uh, I didn't... I wasn't a huge fan of the, like, first 10, 15 minutes of the movie. It did not slow down... And I forgot, I made a mental note in the movie when they actually slowed down the movie to have some dialogue and have some, you know, who, you know, who's who through dialogue, not through uh, graphics. But man, that did not slow down. And you can do that, but I feel like you have to do that when there aren't so many characters. I don't know, that sounds weird. Like, it's, it seemed like it would work the other way around. But I just did not like, I didn't like the beginning. And I just threw out the whole movie. It was one linear story, no character development, and it moved too quick. And the whole plot of the story was dumb. That was some top level hand graphics right there. Linear story, no development, <laughs> moved too quick. <laughs> um, I was trying to think. Uh, the only other major negative that's not the nitpick that stood out to me was Harley Quinn and Joker's relationship. Wasn't a fan of that. Um, of course, I wasn't a fan of Joker, but it just... This is what I was worried about. I was like, when you first told me, like, the Joker's in here to get Harley back, I was like, that don't sound like the Joker. Mm -hmm. And so it didn't feel like the Joker throughout the movie. It was just like, why is he so hell-bent on getting her back? Like, that weirds it out for me because now it just it doesn't feel like the dynamic we're used to. And a lot of people love it. A lot of people are like, oh, there's this crazy codependence on each other and they're both psychotic, they feed off each other, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, okay, but that's not their dynamic. And so I guess you get to change it, you know, with the movies, but I, I don't like that change. It, it, I don't know, it made Joker lose a little something. And for a Joker that already wasn't that intimidating to me, you really lost something with that and chasing after Harley everywhere. I will say it was really smart of Joker, of him like, okay, his first stop, let me go to the doctor or whoever that can get this bomb out her neck. Like mm -hmm. he didn't just blow, show up, guns blaze, and get her head blown off. Yeah. So jo Joker's not just off the cuff. He's savvy still, yeah. but still, it's just like I don't know. The one scene, and I guess that's a positive, so I can save it. But oh yeah, let's go to positives. Okay, so the one scene that I actually liked between them was the uh, the acid vat one. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like a lot of it until the very end. Like, I was like, okay, I hate this. To the very end, I don't know, something about the music and just the tone of it was just like, okay, now I could kind of feel where this all started. And like, the, the most subtle things make the most difference in the movie. Instead of just having her jump in and him jumping in after, you saw them do it where Joker walked off. He's like, ha, you're dead. I'm, he didn't yeah. say that, but... He's basically like, I gotta kill herself. You know, that was, I don't care about it. And then you see that one moment where he's like, oh, I yeah. do care about it. <laughs> then he goes and get her. But for that moment, we still have our same Joker that doesn't care about Harley. And that meant a lot to me. Um, that was the only time I felt their connection. Other than that, 
because I went into this movie and now I'm back to negative somehow, but <laughs> I went into this movie under the impression this was the new 52 story of Harley breaking away from Joker. Yeah. All about Harley, who is she on her own? Who is Harley Quinn away from Joker? You know, taking off the pudding collar and all that. Like, because a lot of times early in the movie, and even when she's like staring down the stairwell and it triggers the flashback, it seems like she's like, oh man, you know, Joker's not that good to me. Yeah. And so I'm waiting for her to break away and it just never happened. Like Joker shows up and I'm thinking, she's like, no, I'm not going with the Joker. She's like, oh yes, I'm gone. And I was just like, wait, what a minute. I thought she was making a new identity with the Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, with those negatives, I think we just have to wait. Again, I said it when BBS came out that you have to wait to see where these characters end out end up with the payoff so um and you have that solo film batman or batman solo film where we will probably see joker hopefully he's talking about it and maybe even harley quinn depending on what the timeline is i don't know um so you know positives, big positives oh, yeah. oh you still have something to say no no I was big positives <laughs> it sounds like i have none <laughs> wow uh, shock see we don't talk about this too much beforehand so i'm getting all this live yeah like no that. i don't there wasn't huge positives for me i like diablo surprised me great surprise uh the music there's a lot of good music in there a, li <laughs> a little too much all at once they had it all at the beginning like i said it was all quick and then all of a sudden there's no music um <laughs> music? no popular music anymore so yeah i don't know batman with that shot that was that was awesome that was I'm great. Glad you brought that up. That I was great. Forgot. And like you hear him speak like Batman speaks. He's like, Deadshot, it's over. Or whatever he said. He, he referred to him as Deadshot. And you know, that's just classic Batman to me. And just I thought it was awesome. I didn't think we were gonna see Ben Affleck, but we did. Oh yes, thanks for reminding me. You were so wrong. I was wrong. Uh, ben Affleck's not in the credits. I think it's just the stunt double. I'm like, there's no way. He was not there for two days and not got in that all up in that movie and he did he got all up in it yeah. <laughs> but yeah there's nothing that sticks out to me right Jesus. now <laughs> you're you're gonna be surprised though by my rating but. okay foreshadowing now i've said most of the positives with dead shot and stuff when we did the character breakdowns so I'm trying to think something i haven't mentioned i mean overall tone to me i liked it i think it fit well and i was talking with someone i think i commented on somebody else's review is that the thing with dc that was missing and not for me but for a lot of fans was that oh these aren't heroes they're not having fun they're not happy to be heroes mm -hmm. and we've talked a lot about how we are okay with uh the really character driven heroes that are like looking more into uh, you know their life and why they want to do this and motivations and i'm okay with that but I think this was the perfect place to bring that with villains because they love doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They love being bad. Yeah. And so you saw the fun of them just enjoying what they're doing. And so that tone really was good. The music, the, the lights, the glitz, the glam. And we'll talk about that on some other show about who put that in the movie. Yeah. But I think it worked. I think it worked so well. Like The music to me, some people hated it. It was almost a character, and all, not even care. I don't want to sound pretentious. The music upped the characters. It gave them a little more flavor. Mm -hmm. Every time you saw it, it's like, okay, you know you know what vibe and tone when you saw the character and you heard that music. So I really like that. Speaking of Dead Shot Batman scene, this movie, and I remember that's the exact scene, the exact moment I was like, this is the first time I feel like I'm, the comic book movies have come to, oh, or yeah. comic books have come to the screen. Like, out of every movie I've seen, I've never felt that till that moment. Because with Marvel, you got Iron Man solo movie, you got Captain America, you got Thor, you know, whatever. It's like, okay, Avengers, now you can see them all together. Now you can see them interact. Now, you know, this is the time for that. And so everything seems like it's in the same universe, but it's not in the same world. Mm -hmm. With this, and we, Flash was put in like like the day before the movie came mm -hmm. out. But that moment, and that moment with Batman, is like, oh my god, this is all happening mm -hmm. within the same world. Like, you see Batman like kind of float down. We talked about 
David Ayer was like, to these villains, Batman just shows up and ruins their day. Yeah. And that's exactly how it feels with his daughter. He's trying to do right. Batman just floats on down and gets dead shot. And I was like, oh my God, this is all connected. And so a long time ago, before the DCU started, I was predicting theories and I said, I think DC is going to cross over a lot more than Marvel does. Mm -hmm. And Batman has been that connector. Flash was cool too, but it's like, man, all this is happening. It's just like the comics where people could pop up at any time. So Batman's world grew so much out of this movie. Really exciting. Yeah. Uh, this is negative, or it's not so much a negative, it's just kind of an observation. My suspense, okay, when you read a comic book, and it's a connected universe, and something's big going on, and some oh, characters. Yeah, I know you don't. <laughs> yeah, it, you you kind of your suspension of disbelief is a little bit better in the comics in terms of, well, they, you know, they're doing something else. Batman's doing something else. The Flash is doing something else while Superman is fighting Doomsday or something. It was a little hard for me to believe that not Flash, not Batman, not Wonder. Well, I don't know where Wonder. Well, yeah, Wonder Woman. She's here. Did not go to Midway City to help out. Whatever, you don't have to do. I I, I don't want them to go there. I'm I'm not. I'm just making an observation that it's a little bit harder with these movies to have your suspension of disbelief and and not think to yourself, why aren't they there? You're what right. is going on? Hundred percent correct. Yeah, I, I will not disagree with you there. I can't. I, and there's I, no word. There's no way around it. Yeah, I racked it. my mind to figure yeah. it out because at first I was like, oh, Batman's collecting the other heroes, but he doesn't have the the files yet so yeah. i'm like oh <laughs> i'm like where is batman at so yes yes 100 percent. another downside to the villain again there's reasons why you needed the villain to be so big but there's a lot of downsides to it too, yeah and that's one of them that marvel has a huge problem with and that's the only reason i could kind of dismiss it because marvel does it all the time yeah so okay all right um let's grade this bad boy <laughs> Man, I really swayed myself another way than I thought I would today. Um, you go first, because I'm still kind of calculating. Yeah. Uh, so, kind of last impressions. The thing that I've heard, and I wasn't even thinking of when I was watching it, but I heard afterwards that will sell you if you haven't... You, if you haven't seen this movie, you listen to all this, that's your fault. But mm -hmm. if, you have, if you have seen anything about seeing it again, whatever, or if you're trying to figure it out... This is a summer popcorn movie, and you cannot forget that. I know it's August, but it's a summer popcorn movie, and once someone said, I was like, you know you're right. There's so many other action flicks that get all types of passes for the dumb story and no development and all that, and it's because it's fun, and I'm like, for me, that's what it was. It was fun. I don't care that the story was straightforward. I don't care that the villain wasn't that great. I do care the ending scene wasn't that good, but 75% of the beginning of the movie made me love it and I can forgive the other 25% of the movie. Absolutely a fun ride just with these villains, doing what they do. I think it could have been dark and all that, but what they gave us, I really loved. And like I said, that moment with Batman just pushed it over the top because Batman wasn't even there, but everything they do, I'm like, man, they're in Batman's world. Like, Deadshot had his vision. He's like, I killed the bat. And, I, mm -hmm. and again, I'm just like, oh my god, yeah, they're all Batman. I liked them. I like that part. Sorry to interrupt. I like that part because a lot of people had a problem with that because they were supposed to see what they wanted most. And people were saying, well, why didn't he see his daughter? He did. His daughter watched him kill the bat. <laughs> no, she wasn't there. She was standing there. It in was the, the same the scene. It was the same scene when he got caught. I know, but it's he... It's basically in that... But he shot Batman yeah, in the, in the instead vision. Instead of getting caught. So, of course, his daughter's there. You might not saw no, her. No, 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 I'm saying why he didn't see his daughter, like, hugging his... Embracing oh. his daughter. That shows you doubt, deep down that Deadshot is maybe not the guy that we think he is at the He's end of the movie. He's not a good guy. He's not a good guy. So, I like that. I don't know what other people are probably with Go ahead. Let's Dude, get that's... wrapped up. <laughs> I'm sorry, all the great Will Smith moments, you just remind me of another one, the very end with his daughter. It's like, so that's the hypocrisy. So if you shoot a guy oh, from yeah. the building, he's like, oh yeah, well you know you got bullet Wade and Wind. <laughs> you know, there's other factors. He's like, daddy's gotta go, I promise I'll go without killing all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like. Yeah, that was good, that was good. Yes, okay, so anyway, as a regular movie, you know, taking into account story, editing, all that good stuff, 6.5, summer movie, uh, not barely passable, above average, 
rewatchable as hell and it's just like go have fun don't try to overthink it as a comic book movie 8.5 absolutely loved it this is the first movie that connected the universe i don't care what anyone says you get major points just for that alone just the fact you thought to have captain boomerang caught by the flash who is his actual yeah. villain 8.5 so wait, which graphic? I never put two graphics for you. What do you want? You never put graphics on for this one. Oh, I thought I did. See, now we're going to the Oh, no, never mind. We're not doing <laughs> graphics. Um, yeah. I'm not going to... I don't I don't think I ever did... Did I ever do two comic, comic book movies? I don't think I did. I do. So I'm just doing it as a movie and as a comic book movie as well. Oh, God. <laughs> the story was way too quick for me. Characters didn't develop enough. I didn't think it was that funny, to be honest. And there was very little positives coming out. So a 10? 6.5. <laughs> okay. We, 6 were, we ended up with the same one. We did. We did. And you same surprised score me. score with two very different <laughs> yeah. opinions. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I think that's pretty low for me, especially because of how excited I was. I'm a huge DC fan, huge Batman fan. But I thought to myself, if this was a Marvel movie, I would have given it you know, a 6 or 6.5. I probably gave Ultron maybe 6 or 6.5. So I have to be unbiased. So 6.5 for me. Um, but go see it. I still like it. I still enjoy it. I have problems with it. And <laughs> that, that's what movies are. You know, art is subjective. You know what? I, I know we're adding on to a long review, but what I'm noticing through the comic book trend now that DC's in the mix, we, we could talk about critics and all that forever. I'm noticing that a big chunk that plays into people's perception of the movie is expectations mm -hmm. because i know you had high hopes for it and honestly i would have too but i just did not know what i was getting mm -hmm. it with the so different joker never seeing harley quinn and a bunch of characters we never really saw a movie just based on villains so while i wanted to be so excited for it i was just like i don't how can even during the expectations you like all I said was I expect it to be rewatchable and yeah. that's all I needed and so my enthusiasm watching it was just so different and I feel like you because once you have expectations you start writing the movie yourself yeah. in your head you're like they do this oh yeah you can do this and then you don't see it and you get bummed and I mean there's this one I'm not gonna name who it is there's one guy on YouTube that I watch on a popular channel avid basher of batman vs superman like avid it was nasty and he's a comic big fan I, I lost a little respect for him because he was just not only was he upset at it he attacked other people that would even defend it mm -hmm. complete opposite with suicide mm -hmm. squad he loves it while a lot of people like it i don't like this one. Oh no no the reason they did that and so he's defending it and you know he's making reasons for it why it's good and I'm like, well, that's exactly how we were with BVS, and you were just shooting us down. Yeah. And I was like, so, and he even said himself, I had low expectations for this movie. And so it's all about what you expect going into the movie, I think. But anyway, real quick, for the future of DC, uh, we know this is right now lower than BVS on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. We know the critics are killing it, but it broke a record for Thursday night opening. It's tracking really high. My theater was packed. A lot of people I talked to the theater was packed. This movie looks like it's going to make a buttload of money. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't... At this point, I don't think DC's changing track at all. I, I don't think they're worried about the critics any as much as people think they are. You know, David Ayer came out and said it. He's like, I didn't make... He said exactly what Snyder said. I didn't make this movie for the critics. I made it for the fans of comic books. It was eerie how similar the yeah. cast reaction was to BVI. Yeah, exactly. That too. We um, just need a sad Jared Leto. <laughs> <be perfect. laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't think it's going to change any course uh, correction. Uh, or I don't think it's going to have any course correction within the back, behind the scenes. Uh, we'll have to talk about yeah, that later. Yeah. I know I know you're going. Yeah. Um, exactly what I said when we did the what if uh, scenario, what if Suicide Squad bombs, and we were just having fun. I never thought this was going to happen, and it's not bombing, but I never thought it'd be this critically maligned, um, but like, when, when we asked that question, I said, after the Justice League and Wonder Woman stuff from Comic-Con, I don't care what Suicide Squad does, <laughs> like, DC's going straight ahead, it has huge momentum, mm -hmm. and... I think more fans are going to be forgiven to this movie 
than they were with BBS because it's funny. Uh, yeah. For most, so you're gonna have people like you that don't think it's funny, but a lot more people can grab on the funny than hardcore story like BBS. So yeah. I think you're gonna have a lot more people that give it a positive rating. And even if it's half and half, what you did with Wonder Woman and Justice League at Comic Con. You're good. Even with the end credits scene, if you hated the movie, you had to love the end credits scene. It had to just geek you up, like, yeah. for what's coming next. So, I think DC, and this is another conversation, I'm sorry I'm going long. DC's never going to get what Marvel gets, because Marvel plays it safe. Disney plays it safe in every, all across Mar um, Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, they play it safe. They do what most fans will like. And DC is taking chances. Mm -hmm. They're taking big swings. It might miss, it might hit. They're taking swings. And so I think it's always going to end up about 50-50 the way their movies come out. As long as they make money, you know, they'll keep going. But I never think they'll be as beloved as Marvel is. No. So. And they shouldn't try it anymore. They should do what they're doing. Yeah. All right. So, uh... That was some uh, kind of Suicide Squad review. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you heard it here, it is canon.